Welcome back to the wallet. Well, these are inequalities type of questions. Inequality from the name, it is clear that it is not equality, it is inequal. What are the types of questions we can expect in inequalities? You may have a statement with inequality symbols like less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. From that statement, you may have one or two or three conclusions. What you are supposed to do, check out these conclusions, follow the statements or not. These are the statements, these are the conclusions. So question number one, we'll take a look at that. A less than G and G greater than M and M greater than or equal to K. That is what the statement says. Now look at the conclusion number one. Conclusion number one, what we need to check, G is greater than K. While the conclusion follows, we need to check whether this conclusion follows the statement or not. The conclusion follows only if this conclusion is valid for all possible situations. That means all possible values of G, K, M and A. If this conclusion follows, I mean this conclusion is valid for all those values, positive or negative or irrational, whatever values then g greater than k that conclusion follows so we need to check whether g greater than k is valid for all the possible conditions all possible values let's look at it g greater than m m is greater than or equal to k so what we need to check is g greater than or equal to k well think about a value for g we just assume a value seven if G is 7, what would be the maximum value for M? G is always greater than M. So, well, if you are looking for integer values, not fractions, integer values, if 7 is for G, then what's the maximum value for M? That must be 6, correct? 6. If M is 6, then M is greater than or equal to K. Then what is the maximum value of K? Well, k would be either equal to m or less than m, correct? k is either equal to m or less than m. So, k could be either equal, so k could be 6. Or k could be less than m, that means k could be 5, 4, all those possibilities. So, the maximum value of k is 6. And g is what? 7. So, if g is 7 and k is 6, g is greater than k. And the other values of k, k could be what? 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. If k is 4 and again g is 7, then definitely g is greater than k. So for all the possible values of g and k and even m, so g is greater than k. So this one, it's valid for all the possible values. So this conclusion follows. Right, we'll check it out, the second conclusion. K is less than A. K less than A. Well, what would be the value of A here? A must be less than G. If you assume that G is 7, A is what? Different values, different possible values for A. Which are they? Well, it could be 6. Could be 5, right? 5. Could be 4 could be 3, 2, etc. It goes like that. Now for k, this is again, this is what exactly possible here. m is 6, m is equal to k or m is greater than k. So if m is 6, k would be equal, right? 6. Or m is uh, 6, k could be less than m. So that means 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. It goes like that. Now we'll pick a value for k from here. Let's say, assume that k is 6. If k is 6, uh, we'll pick a value for a. a is 6. k is 6 and a is 6. Then k is what? Equal to a. k is equal to k. But it's conclusion says k is always less than a. 
Is it possible? No. Well, some conditions, some possible values, k could be less than a. For example, we'll take k as 4. k 4 and a as 5. So that possibility, k is 4, a is 5. That case, k is less than a. Well, some of the situations, k could be less than a, but for all the possibilities, can we say that k is less than a? Well, that is not possible. k could be less than a for only some set of values, but k may not be less than a for the other sets of values. k could be equal to a. For example, k is 6 and a is 6. k is equal to a. Or, well, k is 6 and a is 4. k 6, a 4. That case, K is 6, so K is greater than A. See that? So now we can say that K is less than A. It is not always possible. It is not always valid. So the conclusion doesn't fall. Now we'll look at second question right here. Second question, we have R greater than or equal to J. That is equal to T. And we have another statement here. So in this case, we have two statements. Second statement, n less than q, that is equal to r. And the conclusions are, q is greater than j. So the q is from the second statement, and j is from the first statement. And look at the second conclusion, n. n is from the second statement, and t, t is from the first statement. So that means, ultimately, we need to combine these two statements. Otherwise, we cannot really deal with this conclusion. So how do we combine it? So the best way to combine, look at the common letter or common letters. Well, this case, N, Q, R. This case, R, J, T. Which one is common? R. Well, R is here, R is here. So let's try this. Well, we'll take the first statement R greater than or equal to J that is equal to J equal to T. Now look at the second statement. What is it? Q equal to R. So we have R here. So we'll combine this. Q is equal to R. So R and Q we can connect it. Now Q is connected with what? N. So Q is greater than N or N is less than Q. So n is less than q. So q, we have n. n is less than q. Now this is what the combined statement we have. We'll combine this combined statement with the conclusions. Well, conclusion, the first conclusion is q always greater than j. q is greater than j. Look at it. q. q is greater than j. Well, we'll assume a value for Q. Let's say Q is 6. If Q is 6, Q is equal to R. Well, R is 6. Now look at J. J would be either equal to R or J would be less than R. So the maximum value of J could be 6. Or it could be less than 6. Well, J would be less than R. That's another possibility. Either equal or less than. So if it is less than it could be 5, it could be 4, it could be 3, all those possibilities. Now what we need to check it out, Q greater than J. While Q is 6, J could be 6, right? So that case Q is not greater than J. Well, Q is 6 and J could be 5, that case Q is greater than J. Well, some of the cases Q is greater than J and some of the cases Q is not really greater than J, it is equal to J. That means Q greater than J is not really valid in all situations. It may be valid in some of the situations. So that means it is not really valid always, so it doesn't follow. Now, second conclusion we have N less than T. Look at it, n. n must be less than t. 
So well, in this case, we have Q6, R6, etc. Right? So what would be the value for N? N must be less than Q. So the values, possible values of N would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. It goes like that. What T? T is what? T is equal to J. If J is 6, T would be 6. If J is 5, T would be 5. If J is 4, T would be 4. If J is 3, T would be 3. It goes like that. Now what we need to check? N less than T. Well, N. Let's assume that N is 5. So N is what? 5. If n is 5, what is the value of t? Well, t could be 6, 5, 4, 3. So n is 5, t could be 6. That means n is less than t. If n is 5 and t is 5, in that case n is equal to t. So that doesn't mean that n is less than t. So n less than t, that conclusion is not valid when n is 5 and t is 5. Now, if n is 5, t could be 4. That case, while n is greater than t, so n less than t, again, it's not valid. So you can check for any value. Let's say we get 3. If n is 3, if n is 3, t could be 6. That means n less than t. If n is 3, t could be 4. That means, again, n less than t. Well, n is 3, then t could be 2. That is possible. If j is 2, t could be 2. If n is 3 and t is 2, that case n is greater than t, not less than t. So n less than t, it is not valid for all the possible values of n and t. So that means this conclusion is valid for some values and it's not really valid for some other values. So this conclusion doesn't follow. So the both conclusions do not follow. That would be the answer here. And for the first question, only conclusion one follows. That would be the answer. These are the basic type of questions you can expect in inequalities. Of course, we may have one more level of questions in inequalities We'll discuss about that questions when we meet next time. Thanks for watching.